Well, it's another day in paradise. I use that term loosely, right? Uh, sorry, it's been so long. It's been such a gap, and it's been really, really busy. I felt well, get this call. It will not go away. But um, anyway, uh, there's. Let me get my book here. This we. This has been awesome for Sunday school. As I know, I shared in my last video. Um, stuff's falling off the doors over there. Anyway, I know, uh, and if you can tell, I moved my desk. But anyway, um, as I shared in my last video, my excitement over Sunday school because some great discussion in this and talking about this. Um, anyway, I just wanted to, uh, just wanted to, what to do? I wanted to talk about something that we went over this past Sunday in Genesis, uh, and I think it, it was an awesome discussion. Uh, but first, um, my coffee is finished, so let me go get that real quick, okay? I'm back. Did you miss me? It wasn't like a second for you. Anyway, I got my coffee. Yes. Um, I can't adult today. I love this cup. <laughs> I found it at the local dollar store, and it's it is like it's 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 my go-to all the time. So anyway, Genesis. Um, let's see where were we? We in class we had talked about uh, saving chapter four for last Sunday, just for a Sunday by itself, just chapter four, because um, the things that it was talked about, and uh, let's talk about in chapter four, and I thought I had jotted down some notes, but apparently I did not, did I grab the wrong book, you know what, I did, this means my book is still, this is, this is my wife's book, but anyway, You'll get the point. <laughs> Knew I wrote down some stuff. But anyway, talking about Cain and Abel, that was what we talked about. We talked about Cain and Abel, and we we went through talking about his offering, Cain's offering versus Abel's offering, and uh, a lot of people think that uh, uh, this is what jumps out to me here. Is a lot of people say, well, uh, Abel's offering had to do with being a, a blood sacrifice, and and Cain's was. You know, it was crops, it was uh, vegetation, it was um, the fruit of the ground, as it says here in chapter 4 in the ESV version. Um, but you had, uh, later on in, you know, as, as, as Levitical law, and as, as the, um, say, how do I put it, uh, as the offerings that God required, of the Israelites, as all that was set up, there were things like the wave offering, you know, and the uh, which consisted of bread and uh, and you know and wheat and oil and you know all that stuff. So it's it, what jumps out to me is that it's not that it's a it's a fruit of the ground versus a sacrifice, a sacrificial offering, um, but the fact that it says that uh, I, I think we can see a lot in in, in kind of what is not said too sometimes and that it says uh, in in Genesis chapter 4 uh, I'll, I'll read in verse 3 it says in the course of time Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground and Abel also also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions and the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering but for Cain and his offering he had no regard see it doesn't say that Cain brought the first fruits of the ground it doesn't say that he brought the first fruits. It says that, that Abel brought the firstborn, but it doesn't say Cain brought the first fruit. So I think it has a lot to do um, with this first um, this first murder, with this first, uh, in this offering here. It has a lot to do with the heart. It has a lot to do with the heart problem uh, because Abel shows his worship of God in this offering by giving him his firstborn of the flock he he, he gives because he's not, he knows he's not guaranteed anything after that firstborn but yet he he worships god by giving okay i'm going to give you my firstborn but cain it says he just gives the fruit of the ground let's say he gives his first fruit there's no putting uh faith in god that he's going to take care of the rest of it after that first fruit year he just says that he gives of uh the fruit of the ground not the first fruit. his worship is not there because there's something wrong in here. There's something wrong in here. We know there's something wrong because it says, it goes on to say, but for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, 
Why are you angry and why is your face fallen? He was angry but in here because his, you know, there was some maybe some jealousy over, over God's regard for Abel's offering over his. Uh, but it, it all started in here. It all started in the heart. Um, that's where we see leading into this, this sin of, of Abel's murder is uh, God goes on to say, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. God is telling Cain here, look, there's something going on in here inside of you that you've got to, you've got to get a handle on here, buddy. Um, if you're doing well, and you got nothing to worry about. If you're not, it's going to lead you down a road that, that you're not ready for. Because um, he knows he knows Cain's heart. He knows Cain's not giving this offering because he, he worships him or he puts his faith in him or he trusts him. He knows it's a heart problem. He's not truly, uh, he's not truly worshiping God, and, and that, that's where that anger starts to well up. That's you know we see a heart of sin, and we see a heart that is it is leaning toward, uh, leaning toward sin because he's leaning, he's getting angry. He's not thinking about what he's doing wrong here by offer not offering the first fruits. He's not thinking about what he where he's messing up. He's thinking about okay, there's some jealousy there. All right, uh, my son had an issue with the lawnmower. Um, back to what I was saying, it, it's a heart problem. It is a heart issue. That's where sin starts, is in here. That's where it started for Cain. It started in his heart. He got angry. He got uh, jealous. He, and, and, and God told him, uh, you, you worry about what you're doing, and you worry about uh, you being obedient and worship me, and, and, and you, you got nothing to worry about, but you're, you're, you're not worshiping me, and now you're getting angry because you're comparing yourself. You're not taking care of your own your own uh, offering here. You're not doing what you should be doing. And instead, you're worrying about your brother. You're worrying about Abel and what he's doing. And um, so he, he's telling you, uh, if you do not do what is well, sin is crouching at the door. The sin is crouching at the door of his heart. It is, it is, it is deep inside in his desire. He said, you must rule over it. But he doesn't rule over it. He lets it. He lets it grow. He lets that anger burn, and, and, and he doesn't rule it. He doesn't control it. He doesn't grab it and say, "I'm, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna let this. I'm gonna focus on what I'm doing, and I'm gonna do what I'm supposed to do. I'm gonna give to God what I'm supposed to give to God. I'm gonna do what for God what I'm supposed to do to God instead of worrying about everybody else, uh, because he's saying I, I, he, he didn't say I gotta answer for God, and, and Abel's gotta answer God for his stuff. And I'm not sure. No, he said I'm. I'm busy. I'm, I'm, I, this isn't right. This isn't fair. And, and was he? How did he acts on that anger, and he, he lashes out and strikes Abel down. So, it's it's just not good either way. It's not good. Uh, but the the point is is sin starts in the heart, and it did it did with with Cain. It started in the heart. It started with what's inside because his heart wasn't right to begin with. His relationship with God wasn't where it was supposed to be to begin with. Um, he wasn't given the first fruits to God. He was, he he wasn't giving God what he was owed. He wasn't doing his duty to God. He wasn't serving God like he was supposed to. Instead, he was comparing himself to what what Abel uh, had and was doing and saying, you know, well, this isn't right. You know, this uh, he he's well favored. You know, and I, I'm I'm doing enough. He says, you know, it's like he was saying, I'm doing enough. Why isn't this enough? And he's he's getting all the glory here. He's getting all the, you know, and, and it made him mad. And he, he ended up lashing out. And that anger took hold. That sin took hold in him. And, and he, he acted upon it. And we can't act upon it. What, what starts in here, we have to allow God to work in it. God's telling us, if you do well, you've got nothing to worry about. You, and what he means is if you do what you're supposed to do for me, is what God is telling us. You do what you're supposed to do for me. Don't focus on anybody else. Don't focus on what anybody else is doing, what they're giving, what they're, you know, what they have, or, or, or how they're living, or whatever else. You focus. He God's telling us, you focus on me. Is what God's saying. Focus on God, not anybody else, not anything else. Focus on God. Give God what's due to Him. Give God what, the worship that He uh, He deserves. Give God the the time that he deserves. Give God the service that he deserves. Give God your life which he deserves. Because if you if you don't, if you start taking your eye off of him, 
and you start putting it on other things, you start worrying about what other people say and what other people are doing, you're going to mess up. Sin's going to creep in. And if you don't, if you don't, if you don't rule over it, if you let it, if you let it go, and you keep your your eye off of God and you keep your eye on everything else, that sin's going to overrule your life. You got to keep your eye on God. Don't be like Cain. Don't be like Cain in Genesis four. Don't let sin overrule your life. Keep your eye on God. Do what is well for Him and nobody else. And God, God will walk with you. He will bless you. He will bless you. He'll, he'll, he will. Uh, that relationship, you know, that interaction with Him will be so fulfilling that you won't care what anybody else is doing or saying. Your relationship with Him will give you everything you need, but you have to keep your eye on Him. Do yeah, you, you you do what is well, and all that will be well with you. And that wellness is on God. Don't let sin overrule your life. It was exciting stuff. I enjoyed the the discussion, the conversation we had uh, in Sunday school, and I'm excited about the uh, this coming Sunday as we go through five, six, and seven. We're going to head into the Noah, um, the the narrative of Noah and and the flood, and all. So uh, it's exciting stuff. So I, I I'm just I I can't. Ah, you know, uh, God's word gets me excited. It really does, and uh, it, should, it should get you excited too. Uh, like I said, I, I moved my desk around. You can see it's pretty much a lot more of my house uh, instead of that wall and that counter. But anyway, um, so get into God's word, read it. You, you, the the stuff that He'll reveal to you, the stuff that He'll speak to you through it is amazing. It will transform your life, and that's what it's supposed to do supposed to transform your life as you walk with him as you draw close to him and uh, be a church Sunday if you don't um, go and worship if you don't if you're not going to church find one to go to a Bible believing uh, passionate for Jesus authentic worship kind of church and I will see you guys next time